Mr. Rankin, seconded by Mr. McGregor, moves that Bill C-415, an act to establish a procedure for expunging certain cannabis-related convictions, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights. Debate. The Honourable Member for Victoria. It's an honour to rise in the House this afternoon to present my private member's Bill C-415. My bill would have the effect of expunging or erasing criminal records for the half million Canadians who have records for the possession of small quantities of cannabis, which of course became a perfectly legal activity in October of this year. This is a matter of fundamental justice and I urge all members to support this initiative. To government members, I urge you particularly to keep an open mind and to study this bill and amend it so we can move it forward as quickly and effectively as possible. As far back as 2012, of course, the Liberal Party passed a resolution, number 117, on cannabis legalization. And it's curious to note that it used the word in, the, in that uh, resolution of elimination of all criminal records for simple possession. So I'm pleased that the Liberal Party agrees with me that expungement and not merely record suspension is what is required in this circumstance. Now, according to a report commissioned by the Department of Public Safety, fully 86% of those surveyed agreed that completely erasing criminal records for minor offences, particularly cannabis possession, was the right thing to do. And judging by the enormous outburst of editorial support that I'm pleased to have received from coast to coast, Canadians get it. They support this initiative because Canadians are fair-minded people who recognize the unfairness inherent in continuing to burden people with the effects of a criminal record for something that is now legal. Now, I stood yesterday in the House with a prominent Aboriginal leader from British Columbia, with people from the John Howard Society, and with Senator Pate, of course, the former executive director of the Elizabeth Fry Society. They all called on the government to get with this, expunge records, and not to rely, as I'll explain why it would be inappropriate to do, on, the issue, on, on, on merely criminal uh, record suspension this, in this context. Now, Madam Speaker, I have three fundamental arguments in the short time available I would like to make. First, to challenge the government's assertion that they will be bringing on immediate pardons. The word immediate, I think, means now, and I'll explain why that's simply not possible. Secondly, I want to address the government's apparent argument that expungement is somehow reserved for only one category of past historical injustices and not things like this. Only record suspensions, apparently, in their mind, is appropriate in this context. And thirdly, to tell Canadians about just how the unjust application of cannabis laws in our country has happened. I think it's undeniable that there has been an injustice. So on the first point about the timing, the government has, of course, had several years to address the signature uh, initiative, uh, cannabis legislation. Unlike other jurisdictions like California and Vermont, when they brought in their laws, they brought this piece in at the same time and they uh, suspended and automatically expunged, rather, the records for people with convictions of small quantity of, of cannabis. The Liberals chose not to do that. They said, now we, will wait, we should wait for record suspensions, sometimes they call them pardons, and that will happen sometime soon, maybe with a le legislation introduced, I presume, in the spring. Of course, Madam Speaker, Canadians know there will be an election in October. They know it has to pass any initiative through both houses and be proclaimed in law. So it's likely that that won't even take place until 2020, if my arithmetic is right. I think Canadians, when they hear the word immediate, mean something different. And I would urge them to work with my bill and make it better so we can get on with the task that should have been in, uh, commenced when we brought in legalization in the first place. Second argument is this arbitrary distinction between Expungement reserved for something called historical injustices and pardons for something else. I don't know who is giving legal advice to the Liberals on this point. I've had the good fortune of getting opinions from Ben Berger, professor of law at Osgoode Hall and noted constitutional lawyer, Professor Kent Roach of the University of Toronto. And they see absolutely no distinction in law. And I see none in public policy for the, what the government seems to be insisting upon. 
Let me quote from a leading Toronto criminal lawyer, Anna Maria Enenajor, of the Campaign for Cannabis Amnesty. She said this, and I quote, the government leaves the impression that restrictions exist on the government's ability to issue expungement for the offense of simple cannabis pos possession that are beyond its control. This is false. There is nothing in Canadian law that prohibits our government from issuing expungements for offenses that, in their application, unjustly targeted racialized and indigenous communities. It simply chooses not to do so. This is a policy decision. Close quote. Professor Kent Roach says this, the Charter is the minimum, not the maximum, in terms of our sense of justice. The government's proposed pardon scheme also reveals larger problems with our pardon system, which, among other drawbacks, is conditional on future good behavior. So, so, so Madam Speaker, I think that there's no distinction possible, although the government wishes to make it, I, I urge them to keep an open mind so we can do what's right for Canadians. And that takes me to the third point. The application of this law is an historical initiative to, to address historical in, uh, in, injustice. Now, it is a fact, and I commend the government for acknowledging this, that across this country, black and indigenous people have been disproportionately burdened with criminal records for uh, small quantities of, of possessing small quantities of cannabis, making it therefore for these people who often are already are more marginalized and impoverished citizens, unable to get their foot on the social ladder. Why, Madam Speaker? Well, because they have a record. And that means you're last in line when you want to get that rental apartment. You're last in line when you want to get that job and you have to fill out an application that says something like, or says orally to them, do you have a criminal record? And they have to say yes. If that record were expunged, as my bill would do, it means you can honestly answer that you do not, because it would be deemed in law that you do not have a criminal record. Imagine how many thousands of impoverished Canadians we could assist by doing the right thing. Now, you know, jaywalking uh, is not an offence under the Charter. But if you go after 9 out of 10 people who are black or indigenous for jaywalking, then that is a Charter violation. And what's happened in this country is, and again I commend the government for acknowledging this data being valid, if you are indigenous in Regina, you are nine times more likely to be charged and have a record for cannabis than non-indigenous people. Seven times more likely in Vancouver. And if you're black in Halifax, you're five times more likely to be charged and have a record. And three times more likely if you live in Toronto. This is wrong. This is Canada. We should fix that and let these people get on with their lives. <laughs> so I want to address how to head on the government's argument about record suspensions. They choose to call it pardons. It doesn't do the job, Madam Speaker. It doesn't do the job. What is the difference between a pardon and expungement? An expunged record is erased. It's completely destroyed. Under my bill, the offence is deemed at law never to have happened. So a person whose record has been expunged can truthfully say on that job application, no, I don't have a criminal record. Mm -hmm. That makes all the difference. What about a pardon? Pardon merely reclassifies the record. It may still be released and even revoked in the future. Most importantly, with a pardon, an individual can still face those obstacles I talked about. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, a pardon talks about forgiving by implication and not expungement, which would be an acknowledgement of the historical injustice about how our cannabis laws have been applied in our country. Cannabis amnesty, amnesty has been long, for a long time a policy of the NDP. Since 2004, we've been calling for amnesty for people with records for cannabis possession. My colleague, uh, the, the member for Vancouver Kingsway, who's done excellent work on this file, introduced a motion in the House asking the government to immediately pardon all criminal records for simple possession. The government said no. So let me go to the argument that I've heard the government use as recently as this morning, Madam Speaker, and it goes like this. You're wrong. Pardons, you have to, when that landlord or that job that uh, employer asks you, do you have a record? They're supposed to ask this question. Have you ever been convicted for a criminal offence for which a pardon has not been granted? 
Now, Madam Speaker, they say, well, it's, if there's been a violation of that, you can go to the Human Rights Branch or the Human <laughs> Rights Tribunal in your province. Madam Speaker, I don't know whether they have been dealing with people in inner city. I used to do legal aid in downtown Toronto. People who are not, not literate, who don't speak English, these are people who have enough trouble already. Do you think they're going to get a lawyer with legal aid in this world being so scarce to go and take that to the human rights branch? I don't really think so, Madam Speaker, and neither does Samantha McCallisey, who's doing her PhD on this very topic at Carleton, and she has worked in the inner city of, of Ottawa with uh, John Howard Society for many years, and she says that many people struggling with criminal records can often have barriers like literacy or language, making these formal complaints to the human rights codes very daunting. She says, requiring individuals to muster through a complaint process in order to access employment, housing, or any other social domain seems quite ridiculous. People with criminal records already face enough barriers in the community and are often already doing everything they can to get by day by day, close quote. Madam Speaker, even if the government is right, why wouldn't they go far enough to complete the job with expungement? Even if there's a legal technical reason for being right, which I, I, I urge upon the government is not the, the view of the leading criminal and constitutional lawyers I've consulted, even if they're right, why wouldn't they complete the job? I was so proud to have stood in this House when another expungement initiative took place not long ago, Bill C-66. It was the expungement of what the government termed, and I agree, historically unjust convictions for people convicted in the past of same-sex sexual activity. Yet thousands of racialized and marginalized people also have been treated unfairly in the past. I've demonstrated that. The government accepts it. They have these barriers to renting jobs, uh, renting apartments or getting a job. And I've also had mothers from Saskatoon crying on the phone to me that their child with a couple of joints busted a couple of years ago can't coach the soccer team. Mm. It, it, you know, because there's these vulnerable people initiatives that require people to not have records for reasons we well understand, dealing with children and, and so forth. And their lives are also affected by this. So after years of injustice, why would the government settle for a process that won't fully relieve the burden of a criminal record? The only way to right the wrong and finally give the half million Canadians a fair chance is expungement to erase these records for simple possession. So, Madam Speaker, I think the evidence is pretty clear. The argument about pardons may be, may be good in theory, but in practice, people in the real world don't always ask those precise questions that the government says they should be, landlords and employers should be asked. Have you ever been con part, uh, cr convicted of a criminal record for which a pardon has not been granted, that magic incan incantation? Mm -hmm. The real world in downtown Ottawa, we were told yesterday, the real world in downtown Toronto, is people don't always ask those questions. And therefore, people can't get on with their lives because they have a criminal record and they're already the poorest among us often. And they're disproportionately Indigenous and they're disproportionately Black Canadians. It's just, it's just simply the right thing to do, Madam Speaker. Why they, the government didn't do it at the time, like other jurisdictions they modeled their legalization on, I don't know. But it's time to do it now, and it's time to do it right. A half measure isn't good enough for Canadians. Expungement is the answer. Record suspension doesn't do the job. Let's get on with it. I urge the government, I urge, I urge all members to do the right thing and pass my, uh, support my bill in this House. Thank you. Yeah.